Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. In this video, I am going to attempt to execute a quick tutorial on how to submit your books into CGC. I did a full length video on how to submit about two years ago, and that video has been viewed by almost 40,000 people, or maybe I should say it's been viewed almost 40,000 times. Who knows how many people? Um, but with that video out there, I still get a lot of questions from people on the submission process. I think that there are, are a lot of reasons for that. There are a lot of people that are coming into the hobby. There are people that are doing their first submissions and don't quite know where to start. CGC has also made some tweaks and adjustments to their portal. And I think with those reasons that I just mentioned, along with several others that I could mention, there are questions that are being generated. So I wanted to provide a quick update. And the goal is to not make this one as long as that one. So we're going to high step through two examples. And along the way, my goal is to offer you some practical tips and advice that will hopefully help you as you do your submission into CGC. One of the very first things that I actually want to do is to point you in the direction of that other video that is here on the channel. And if you search for Reggie Collects CGC step by step on YouTube, what you should find first up is a video. And this is the video that was done two years ago. And you can see it's been viewed almost, you know, 36,000 times. I, I like to round up, but this is a video that will walk you through the various steps on how to submit into CGC. The other great thing about uh, the, the channel, my channel that is, is that there are playlists that are set up and there's one set up specifically for submitting books into CGC that not only contains that step-by-step -step video that I just showed you, but a video on how to figure out what you want to send in the CGC, how to determine declared value, how to tell the difference between a 9.8 and a 9.6 for the purpose of submission how to actually um, box your comics up and to actually mail them into CGC or another third party grader if you're going that route. My point is that there is a playlist out there and in that playlist are various videos that will be helpful to you if you are submitting to CGC because they go into a lot more detail into some of the finer points of the submission process. And I will tell you, it is not as onerous as it might seem. When you first do something, most times it takes you a little bit longer to sort it out because you don't know. But the truth is, the more you do it, the easier that it will become. And the videos, I think, will help you to work through that process so that you can find your comfort level. OK, now, with that said, I am going to share my screen with you again, and we are actually going to go to CGC. This is actually the home page of CGC right here. And I'm actually trying to tab through this thing real quick because uh, I wanted to actually get to uh, the CGC labels, I actually help CGC roll out the new labels uh, recently. These are the labels right here uh, for Marvel. And um, that was a pretty cool project to work on with those guys, but I rolled those out uh, around Christmas time. So with that said, uh, we're going to go ahead and log into the website and my username and password and all that stuff is already here. So I'm just going to sign in. And then this will take us to the main starting page inside of the CGC portal. What I will tell you here is that if you do not have a CGC membership, there is a link in the description of my various videos that is an affiliate link. If you click that link in the description, it will help you, you know, get to the point where you can actually sign up for a CGC membership. I've had my CGC membership, I want to say like four years now, maybe four years that I've been, um, you know, buying this and I have a dealer level, um, a membership. So when we get into some of the sections of the website that show pricing, my prices may look a little bit different than yours because at the various tiers, there are different discounts that are applied. So my numbers may look slightly different from your numbers, but rest assured when you set up an account and you go into the system, your numbers will be there and you'll know roughly what your costs are when you're going to submit a book. And I'm, I'm throwing out a couple of caveats there. Hopefully you guys will appreciate that as we work through this thing. All right. So we are here 
on this page. And what we're going to do is go to the submit button and then scroll down to submission forms and make sure I, you guys can still see that you can. All right. So on the submission form page, you can actually see that there are a couple of different types of submission forms here. There is one for comics and magazines, trading cards, lobby cards, and also posters. Uh, and if you read this subhead here, you can basically see that these are for submissions that are to be shipped to CGC or CCS in Florida. One of the big questions that I get from people is how do I know the difference between a comic and magazine? Because sometimes you, maybe you don't know. The great thing about the backside database, the database that sits behind the website is that it is somewhat intuitive. If you are trying to submit a book that it, in, in the comic section, that is a magazine, the system probably will not recognize that book, which leads you to the conclusion that that book is probably not a comic, but a magazine. So you would backtrack and then go to the magazine submission and then go down that path. So that's just one quick way to kind of illustrate that the system is intuitive and will help you as best it can as you're submitting your book. So we're going to go ahead and click online forms. And this actually brings up another page. So let me stop sharing this page and I'm going to share with you the second page that has opened up, which is this one right here, which is, let me make sure you guys can see that you can, this is the submission page. This is where the form actually starts right here, actually. And I need to close out this because I was actually doing a demonstration earlier. So I want to actually close out all of this stuff so that we can navigate down this path unencumbered. So we're going to go back to the beginning here. So this is the submission form start. And what we're going to do is from this drop down, we're actually going to select comic and make sure you guys can still see that. And you can. All right. So from this screen, what we'll see is that there is a series of boxes here. And one of the cool things, again, is that the portal is somewhat intuitive and will help you as you make selections. You will see that things will be grayed out because those things that are grayed out are not um, something that it's not an option that you can select based upon the selection that you just made. And you'll see that play out here just in a second. But we are going to submit a book and we are going to get that book graded. And then we are also going to press that book. So we have some options here. And because we are going to submit a modern book, we are actually going to select the quick press. Quick press is great for books that are modern books or books that don't have a ton of defects. If you have an older book or a book with lots of defects, you actually want to go for the full press and those do have different price points associated with them. So we selected grading and also quick press. And now we're going to hit next. And that takes us to this screen where we actually plug in the book that we want to submit. And as I mentioned, we are going to submit a modern comic. And in this case, it is going to be amazing Spider-Man. And what you'll see is that as I type that, the, the portal is intuitive and it is anticipating what I'm going to ultimately type and what my options are. So we're going to select amazing Spider-Man from the drop down there. And then the publisher, of course, as we come here and type in M-A-R, it lets us know that it is definitely a Marvel book. So we select that. And in this case, we're actually going to submit uh, issue number four. So we selected that. And of course, there's a lot of issue number fours, right? And you can see that here. And we're actually going to select uh, the one from 914 because this is actually the um, where Cindy Moon becomes Silk. So we're going to select that. One of the questions people ask me sometimes is, I don't know if, you know, what the issue date might be or if it's a variant. The, the easiest thing for you to do is to do a quick Google search or to look up the comic and a pricing guide. If you are able to Google it, you can probably see an image of that book. You have the book in your hand. And then from there, you can probably derive from that web web search uh, what some of this information might be like the issue date if you don't know it. But again, as you just saw here, the site is somewhat intuitive and will help you to figure it out based upon what you are actually entering. So in this case, there is no special variant. So we're not going to, we're not going to select anything there. The country of production, we're just going to say right now is United States. And then when it comes to declare value, this is actually an area where people tend to have a lot of questions. So we're going to uh, click on the question mark here. And you can see here that the way that CGC is defining it is they're basically saying um, to enter your best estimate of your collectibles fair market value. 
This will be used to ensure your collectible at CGC's facility. So basically, there, there was a lot of ways that you can think about this. One way to think about it is if something were to go wrong with this copy of Amazing Spider-Man issue number four, while it is in the possession of CGC, how much would it take for you to replace that book? That's one way to think about it, right? And so if, if you bought this book for 50 bucks, you may want to say that the declared value is $50. And that, that's a simple way to kind of do it, right? If you believe that you can replace the book for 50 bucks, you can do that. If you believe that you want to have more insurance, if you will, you can go with a higher amount, but there are caveats. There are pros and cons to those decisions that you're making. For our purposes here, just for the sake of this demonstration, we are going to enter $10. We're going to enter $10 for this. And one of the other things I want to point out to you here is that there is a pre-screen option. This is a really great function. If you are submitting a bunch of books in and you only want the ones that are above a certain grade point to be graded, this is a great way to go. And so if you were to select that, you can actually select that minimum grade. Uh, there is no guarantee, if you will, that your books will come back at that grade. But it's a great way to say if you're sending in, let's say, 20 books, I only want a grade of these 20, those that are a 9.6 or greater. And so what you might get in this example, if we were to do this, maybe... 15 of them would actually be a 9.6 or greater, which means that some of them could be 9.6s, some of them could be 9.8s. It also means that there could be a, a couple, like five in this example, that would not be a 9.6 or higher, which means that those books would be returned to you in their raw form. There's a $5 cost per book right, to do that. But the great thing is you did not waste money grading a book, for example, that could come back at a three. If you, if you really needed it to be a 9.6 or 9.8, right? So that's a great way to do it. For this purpose, we, for the purpose of this demonstration, we are not going to select that, right? We are going to just go with Amazing Spider-Man issue number four from 914 at a $10 declared value. And then we're going to hit the next button. And on this next screen, based upon what we just plugged in, we have a couple of decisions to make as it relates to our grading tier. And we have all of these options available to us. You can see that they are all there for us. But because this is a modern book, we are just going to select a modern tier for this book. And you can see here that this is a, a book that is from 1975 to the present day. And each comic has a value of $200 or less. So you think back to the declared value that we just entered. There are limitations, as I mentioned before, by what you put there. If you were to put $300, you could not do this as a modern book. You would have to make another choice. But because we put, I think it was $10, we can actually select this. So we're going to select modern tier. You have the option, of course, of fast tracking, which cuts your uh, grading time in half and turnaround times are available on the website. But we're just going to go with the regular speed for this book at a cost of $16. And again, these, these are my costs. Your costs may look slightly different. So based upon that, we're going to hit next, which then takes us to the quick press tier. And here we are going to uh, select a, a modern um, option for the quick press. So we select that. And then down below, you may have noticed this on the previous screen and also on this one. If we wanted to do a custom label, we actually have the ability to do custom labels right here from the screen. And the cost, of course, for that is $5 per label. And you can see that kind of illustrated there. We're not going to do it here, but we're just going to go ahead and hit add to cart. And now that book has been added. And you can see between the cleaning, the pressing, that the cost and the grading, sorry, that the, the total cost is $24 for that first book that we submitted. All right. So now we're going to submit one additional book. And the second book is also going to be an amazing Spider-Man book. So we're going to select that. The publisher, as you guys know, is Marvel. So we're going to select that. And then the issue, we're going to say issue number one. We're going to say issue number one, but we're going to say issue number one of the volume one from, let's see if we can find it here, from three of 1963. So we're going to go ahead and select that. 
We're not going to select any kind of variant United States. And we're going to have our declared value here of, let's say, $1,000 for this particular book. And right there, you can see an error message has been generated that the quick press requires a declared market value to be less than $200. One of the things that I also wanted to mention to you here that I find helpful is if you are trying to enter that declare value, one way that you can do it is to do a dirty grade on your comic where you are grading that comic yourself and you're asking yourself, as I'm looking at this book, where do I grade this book? Once you grade it, you can then go to a pricing guide like comicspriceguide.com and, and based upon your grade, you can find a declared value at that grade that could be plugged in right here. So that's, you can do it based upon your grading and based upon a, a, a pricing guide, or you can do it based upon acquisition cost or replacement cost. As I mentioned, there are a lot of different ways that you can handle declared value. And there is a video here on the channel where you can actually get some additional information. But because we selected quick press and because that quick press option has been applied to this book, we need to go back and change that so we can actually do a press. So we're going to hit back up here at the top. And then instead of selecting quick press for this version of Amazing Spider-Man issue number one, we're going to deselect that one and then select the press. This is the full press, which again is four books that have lots of defects and or our older books. Okay. So now we selected that, we go ahead and hit next. We come back here to this amazing Spider-Man issue number one from 1963, and we go ahead and plug in $1,000. So now that is selected and we go ahead and hit next. And then because of the value of that book and also the age of that book, you can see that you have fewer options here. One option is standard at $52, express or walkthrough. So we're gonna go ahead and select standard. You can see here that each comic valued at a thousand dollars or less. So again, the, the declared value has some ramifications for other things that you select. If we had said, you know, $2,000 or $3,000, we would not be able to select the standard option here, but we are going to go ahead and select it. And then we're going to hit next. And then because of what we just selected for the grading tier, the pressing tier is also standard at $60. So we're going to select that. And then we're going to add to cart. And now both of those books, the modern Spider-Man and the Silver Age Spider-Man are now in our cart. You can see the total cost of $136. So we're actually going to click on that and we're going to go to this page. Now, this page is an important one because it actually tells us a lot. On the top part of the screen, what you see is your modern book that we, we entered in for grading and quick press. And you can see your, your total price there of $24 for that book. On the bottom part of the screen, you can actually see the Silver Age book. And they are actually separated because those are two different tiers. Generally speaking, what I try to do is to submit all of my books on the same tier if I can. So if I'm sending in a modern book, I try to send a bunch of modern books on one single invoice, right? Because these two right here represent two separate invoices because they're technically two separate tiers. This will result in two separate shipments coming back to you, two separate boxes, right? So by filling out uh, an invoice where it is all one tier, you're basically reducing your per book cost because you're spreading the shipping costs across multiple books. So in other words, I would not necessarily submit this this way because it's one book in, in two different tiers. It just doesn't really work in my mind. I would submit 20 books that are modern and maybe a handful of other Silver Age books, but I would do them separately. Hopefully that wasn't confusing to people, uh, but, but we've done this and it's all set up. And now let's go ahead and try to, uh, to check out and see what happens here. And what we notice here is that it says the minimum not met. It says quick press service requires a minimum of 15 collectibles, right? And, and this is important again, because we selected quick press for that modern book, but to do that, you have to meet certain requirements. So we're basically going to say, okay, to that, we're going to go back to this quick press and we're actually going to change this. And so again, I would probably send in a bunch of modern books together, which would allow me to meet that minimum of 15 books. But for the purpose of this example, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in 15. 
we're going to say 15 is, is what we are submitting. Now, let's say 20. Let's say 20. We're going to do that. And then down here, we're going to do a pre-screen, right? So we're sending in 20 copies of Silk where, where uh, Cindy Moon becomes Silk. We're going to do a pre-screen. And we're basically going to say, we only want to grade those books that are 9.6 or greater. If they are not a 9.6 or 9.8, send them back to me raw. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to hit next. We've now met our, you know, we, we have to go back through and just confirm our submission requirements. And then we get back to the screen and you can see here that we should be in a good place. You can see that the numbers have changed. You can see Amazing Spider-Man 20, issue number four from 914, declare value of $10 each for a total of $200 declare value and our pre-screen at a 9.6. And you can see the total cost has now jumped up to $480 for that. All right. And so we're going to go ahead and hit the checkout button. And so on this screen, uh, basically what you're seeing is your ability to change your shipping address. So you can have uh, a moment here to kind of modify and tweak that if necessary, then you want to hit next. And then on this screen, you, you are basically selecting your uh, return method of shipment. And what you'll notice here is it says all shipments are direct signature required. The reason for that is because of insurance purposes, the insurance carrier that CGC actually uses only ensures if there is a direct signature when the book is actually being shipped. That's just one of the requirements. And I know that because I actually use the exact same insurance company that CGC uses, and I interviewed him on the channel as well. So in this case, to have this book shipped or those books shipped back to us is going to be $66. My assumption here is that there is actually going to be two separate charges. One of them is probably going to be about $66 for that bigger invoice. There's probably going to be an additional charge of some lesser amount for the second invoice, which would be the Amazing Spider-Man issue number one from 1963. And so what you're seeing here is basically what they believe the cost will be based upon what you entered. But because those two tiers, the modern tier and the standard tier move at different intervals, that is probably going to result in two different shipments, not a single one. So with that said, I want to hit and hit next. And then that brings me to the payment method, right? So this is basically where, you know, I plug in my payment information and we're not going to, we're not going to do that part here. Um, there are a few uh, additional caveats that I want to give you. And so again, my big thing is I try to send like kind books on the same invoices, moderns together up to 25, silver age together up to 25, because again, it just makes sense to reduce the per um, book shipping costs by having more books go in. And yes, it is more expensive, but, but it is an option that, that I actually like. The other thing is after you plug in your credit card information, what you're going to get is an opportunity to print off a packing slip for your submission. What you want to do is when you are bundling up your books, you want to put your books in the exact same order as they appear on that packing slip. Now, that order could be different from the order in which you entered them into the system. So, and I'm making this up. You could basically have, you know, uh, in, if I had entered, let's say, a third book, right? Maybe Amazing Spider Man uh, modern book, uh, issue number three. There is a chance that they could say, do, do all the issue fours first and then the issue three on the packing slip, right? So you want to just make sure you look at the packing slip, look at the books that you're submitting, put them in the same order. The reason for that is that if you deviate from that packing slip, the people that are receiving your books may not be comic book experts. They may not be able to know that there's a discrepancy there and know how to fix that discrepancy. So if there is a discrepancy that is sent in, they may just have to set that to the side and have someone else evaluate that later. So my point is by deviating from the packing slip, it could result in slower processing of your comic. So make sure when you pack it, you put it in the right order. The other thing that I want to mention is when you have, in some cases, a CGC membership, you will get a credit that gets applied to your account. It is important to know that when you are submitting your books into CGC, you are getting a packing slip, you are getting uh, a total, and you saw my total on the screen. That is actually 
potentially not what I am going to pay. And I say that for a couple of reasons. That total that is shown is an estimation based upon what you put into the system. Once your books are received by CGC, they're going to check them in. They're going to confirm that everything you said you sent, you actually did send, right? Then they're going to input it in the system and they may have to make some tweaks and adjustments. Ultimately, they are also going to apply any credits that might be on your account as well. You won't see your credits in the portal Those credits are processed on the back end. So that's why I say the subtotal you see may not be what you actually pay because there could be some adjustments that get made by accounting on the backside for a few different reasons. Ultimately, when your books are received and processed in and then they move through the process, you will be invoiced at that point and it will hit your credit card or your debit card or whatever it happens to be. So uh, don't don't uh, don't freak out if, if you don't see the charge hit your card right away. And if you do see it hit and it's slightly different, recognize that it could be because of credits and or other adjustments that CGC made in the event, for example, that you forgot to include one book or like what I've done is actually accidentally send an extra book for some crazy reason, things have to be adjusted because of that. All right. So again, there's a lot more tips and pointers that I could offer up to you guys. Uh, I don't want this video to be crazy long. And as I'm looking at the time, it is a little long. Um, Definitely check out the other videos that are here on the channel because they are here to actually help you. And if you need any advice from me, don't hesitate to reach out to me on Instagram at Reggie Collects, or you can send me an email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com.